Hi guys, welcome back. This is an all new series that I have introduced in Azure Automation where we are going to talk about Selenium with C Sharp using .NET Core framework. So we have already talked about Selenium C Sharp with full framework. We also talked about Selenium uh, C Sharp in not just like Selenium C Sharp with full framework, but also with framework development and also with BDD using SpecFlow and also with uh, C Sharp using Appium and stuff. I mean, we discuss a lot about C Sharp and many different tools and technologies on that. But .NET Core is kind of evolving right now. And uh, I have been talking about .NET Core as well in many of my courses like Advanced Framework Development with Selenium C Sharp and stuff. We talked about it, but we don't really have a basic series which really talks about Selenium C Sharp with .NET Core or C Sharp with .NET Core a lot. Because .NET Core is coming through and I think in soon, I mean after November, there is not going to be like a .NET Core itself, basically. There is not going to be like a full .NET framework or .NET Core framework like what we have right now. Rather, there is going to be like only one framework, which is going to be .NET 5. So from .NET 5, Microsoft is going to introduce the whole cross-platform uh, way of working with. So the whole idea of the .NET Core versus the .NET full framework is .NET Core framework is something which can run on Linux, Mac, and Windows, like a cross-platform framework, whereas the full framework only runs on Windows. That is a major reason .NET Core really exists in the place. And because of that, .NET Core is super, super easier to use, and a lot of people are really, really using .NET Core itself. And again, if you just Google and search what is there in the .NET Core right now, and if I could able to uh, show you that details, over here, you can see that this is the uh, .NET Core, uh, .NET 5 versus uh, .NET Full Framework for the server app that they have told, where they told that there are two supported .NET implementation of building a server side applications, uh, whereas the .NET 5 for your server based application, and there is a .NET Framework for the server application, which is recommended mainly if your application uh, is using a third party .NET library or NuGet packages, which is not supported yet or which is not fully .NET 5 compatible yet. And similarly, your application uses .NET technology that aren't available for .NET 5, and your application uses a platform that doesn't support .NET 5. So meaning, if your application is not ready for .NET 5, only then you should be using the full framework. But once your application is compatible with uh, .NET 5, then you don't really have to use the .NET full framework at all. So whole uh, Microsoft ideology is to move the complete framework to .NET Core or .NET 5. So there is gonna be no uh, framework without any cross-platform support. So that's the reason this whole course I'm designing right now for supporting that ideology. And many of the students like you asked me that uh, there are courses that I have released in YouTube like uh, six years uh, uh, before, or maybe five years before, where I talked about the Selenium C Sharp uh, in a very, very uh, .NET full framework a specific manner and the spec flow in the .NET full specific manner. But .NET Core is evolving, why I have not discussed that. And also many comments coming through in recent days saying that many of my videos are like obsolete and it is not applicable for today's date. Of course they are not because uh, things are changing. But the core idea of writing the code still remains the same, just that there are some breaking changes here and there which we need to be uh, completely aware of. And that's what exactly this particular uh, series is gonna cover. So this series is gonna uh, be added as a supplement within my advanced framework design and development course, which is available in Udemy. Because in Udemy, people are asking like, why some of the things that I have in the last sections of the course is pretty new, which I have not addressed in the basic series. So probably I'm gonna add this supplement like a crash course on the uh, advanced series as well, so that you will have the whole continuity on that course as well. That's, that's the whole idea of having this series. So this series is gonna be available in YouTube as well as in Excel Automation platform, as well as in the Udemy course. So you can have this available, I mean access this from anywhere. All right, so this is the .NET 5 uh, things which I was talking about, and this is the .NET Core that we are basically gonna talk because .NET 5 is not released yet. So if you just go and search for .NET 5 release date, something like that, you can see it tells that it is November 20 where the .NET 5 is gonna be releasing. So it's not released yet, 
I mean, today is October, which I'm really recording this video. So by November, uh, you will see this particular .NET 5 uh, will be shipped. And once it is shipped, probably uh, we will have uh, even more clearer understanding. But the whole idea of .NET Core or .NET 5 are going to be remaining the same. So there is not going to be a major change on that. But just that the name is going to be a bit different uh, comparatively. Well, that's it. This is about the uh, .NET 5 and stuff. So what are we going to discuss in this whole course then? Basically, this particular series is going to cover the C Sharp .NET course changes versus the full .NET framework uh, courses or series that you have already watched. Those changes we'll be discussing about. And then we'll be discussing about the C Sharp .NET core uh, for Selenium specific. And then we will also uh, talked about the some of the C Sharp .NET uh, core uh, configuration changes, which is required uh, specific for the uh, C Sharp .NET core because you don't really have something called as app config, or you don't really have the uh, the app setting something like that. Rather, you should be using a JSON file for doing all those kind of things. Those things will be covering this particular series. And also, uh, we'll be talking about the C-sharp .NET Core with Specflow. I guess I talked about that in the Getting Started series in my YouTube uh, live series, but we'll be covering that over here as well because a lot of students like you asked, why is it not covered exclusively? Uh, just like in a whole video, it's not fully covered yet. So this particular series is going to cover that as well. And then we'll be covering even more detail on the uh, on the C-sharp changes and stuff, uh, specific to .NET Core and stuff. So. All those details we'll be covering over here. So to get started for this particular video, we're going to jump into Visual Studio right now and quickly show some of the changes that you will quickly see with the .NET Core while you get started with and when you start writing the code in Selenium C Sharp. Before that, I really assume that you already have Visual Studio Community Edition installed within your machine. If you have not, please go ahead and do that install Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition. It's kind of free. I mean, it is fully free. Uh, but if you're using for some production grade uh, application development, then probably you should not use that. You should be having a licensed version for it. But if you're just going to learn or try it out, then you can use the Community Edition for free. Like me, I can use it now. I'm not using anything for production. So that's what we'll be doing. I'm, go I'm going to open a Visual Studio right now. I'll quickly show you or create a simple project with C Sharp and then I will show you how you can get started with it. Just only prerequisite is you need to install the uh, Visual Studio 2019. Uh, that's it. Once you do that, you should have everything that we are going to discuss today. And also, I guess Visual Studio have an option where you install it ask you for the .NET Core. So please check that uh, .NET Core checkbox there. Uh, if not, the installation is not going to happen. So please do that. Once you're done, then you are pretty good to go. All right. So now I have my Visual Studio already available within my machine. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and I'm going to open the Visual Studio 2019 and you can see that the shiny splash screen just appears over here which means Visual Studio is already available within my machine. All right, so this is the Visual Studio 2019 that you can see over here and then you can see within Visual Studio 2019 you have an option to create a new project, open a local folder, open a project or a solution or a clone a repository uh, from GitHub or Azure DevOps. Uh, but we are going to create a new project. So I'm just going to select this create new project. And there are many different project templates available basically. But I'm just going to choose one of the project templates which is available, uh, which is going to be something we really require for automating the application using uh, Selenium C Sharp. And this is nothing but the NUnit test project uh, with .NET Core. So if you don't really find that, you can probably search for uh, NUnit like that. And uh, once you do that, you can see that the NUnit uh, test project with dotnet core appears uh, so there is something called as dotnet core and there is another something and there is one more thing called dotnet full framework or dotnet framework so don't choose the dotnet framework because it's going to be the exact same thing that i already discussed like six years before so just choose the dotnet core because that's the new new uh, which we should be going through uh, so this is going to be the one which we are going to select and once you can see and you can also see that dotnet core it says that it is c sharp desktop linux mac os uh, and web and windows which means it supports many different platform to run your code on it and also it supports iot basically 
doesn't really mention here Microsoft, but actually it runs on IoT devices as well, which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to choose the .NET uh, framework over here, and um, I'm just going to do this. So Selenium C Sharp or C Sharp um, Net Core. Uh, I will check in this code in our GitHub repo so that you can have an access to that particular code. I'm just going to create this particular project. And once we start writing this code, we'll also check in the code in GitHub and I will also show you how you can work with GitHub seamlessly uh, in our upcoming videos so that you can check in the code and you can check out the code from there, pretty much like how I'm doing at the moment uh, using this. So you can also learn GitHub in the process of learning the C Sharp itself. All right, so now you can see that I have my Visual Studio uh, came through. I'm just going to expand uh, or maybe make this font size more bigger so that you will have a clear visibility. I've seen this complaint coming through that my courses has got a black screen and the text is very squinty. So I've reduced that, uh, uh, I've increased the size and I've made it white. So you have the uh, problem gone. And you can see that within this uh, uh, project, the pretty quickly that you can see over here is the dependency. You can see that there is something called as a frameworks and there is a project. So if you have a full framework, this frameworks will not be there, basically. It's, there will be like something called as references, and within references, there is something called as assemblies, uh, and within assembly, you will have many different uh, DLL files there. But over here, there is something called as a framework, and it says Microsoft.NetCore.app, which is the Netcore app, which is uh, the major framework which is running behind the scene. And then the packages is nothing but the NuGet packages. So basically these are the compatible NuGet packages that is required for running your, um, running your test project itself. That is the one which is listed over here. And this is the test class that you can see um, over here, the unit test onecs file, which has pretty much exactly the same thing. Same class, same methods like setup and test methods. Everything is pretty much exactly the same thing no change on that language at least, but just that how you design uh, the code right now within this framework is a bit different compared to the full framework. But other than that, these remains pretty much exactly the same thing. There is no change on that at all. So don't even get confused on that area. So that's it. This is the, uh, this is the .NET Core framework that we have. And <laughs> let's see how it, we execute this particular code. So let's say if I want to uh, run this code, let's write some console dot write line. So if you just put C O um, console and hit control dot, you can see that the using systems is currently missing. That's why the console is not coming through there. Console dot and there is this uh, write line where I'm gonna say set up. Um, there we go, and then just gonna copy this and i'm just gonna go to the test and i'm gonna say this is the test one and it says assert.pass which is which means the test is going to pass basically and because this is a test project you, you cannot just go and run over here on this particular run button so if you do run that you will get an error saying this is a class library project you cannot just run the code uh pretty much like how you you do run that you can see that it shows you that uh, it exited and it cannot be able to run that. Please close this particular window. So you need to close that. So basically this is a uh, non-executable project. So this is a test project, which is, which is there is no main method which you can execute uh, this code directly. Uh, rather, you should go to the test explorer and then over here, you can see that the test will be discovered automatically by Visual Studio and then you can right click and hit run button there so that it will run the test for you. So basically this is a test project, right? This is an init test template that you chose. And you can see there is an additional output where it shows setup and test one. And it is passed because the assert.pass is something that we uh, gave in that method. That's it. This is the first project and congratulations if you have already completed something that you have uh, to need to learn on the .NET Core and it is available for you. Next video, we'll try to associate Selenium within this project and then we'll see how we can uh, run a super simple Selenium code and also we'll check in this code to the GitHub so that you can have access to it and you'll also learn how you can do all sort of things very, very easily in .NET Core world. See you in our next video. Thank you.